Wow, <laughs> this pie is amazing. No. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Welcome. Welcome to the video. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm feeling excited because today I have a special video for you. We are going to head over to Hadley's. He's going to show us how to make some homemade apple pies. And he always does it a little bit different, a little bit special. He adds his special Hadley hippie flavor to everything. And what's really cool is that we are going to pick the apples fresh from the tree for the apple pies. Okay, so pretty much I'm just in front of Sprouts right now. I have been commissioned to get a couple ingredients. <laughs> I've got the goods. Hello. She's there. I'm here. Well, first things first, I was commissioned to get some organic pastry flour. The only pastry flour they had there was the whole wheat, but Hadley is not feeling the whole wheat, so we'll see. We're gonna do something different. All right, so I think I'm just gonna make coffee real fast. Hadley is rolling a joint. <laughs> uh, for anyone that thinks that's crazy, it is legal here in California. But he said it's the first step to any pie making process. Yes, it's important to heighten your sensitivities. Aha! Well, what about me? I guess the coffee will have to heighten my sensitivities. Yes. Okay, I'll meet you there. Oh, you're here. Does he? Yeah. How sweet. Stay, buddy. <gasps> oh, my little dude. Oh, I love you. Yes, I do. Okay, so you place your your basket and then you go. Oh, oh. Yes, I didn't get any. Nope, They're it's going, like going everywhere but <laughs> to the basket. So, a lot of people don't realize that sometimes the apples on the ground are some of the best ones because it means in some cases they were perfectly ripe and so they finally fell off. Twist a little too. If you twist as you pull it, whoa. Okay, now let's go to another branch because they're everywhere. Oh, here's a good one. Okay, so we picked all the apples from this one and we're gonna go to the next apple tree. See, this one looks really good to me. It got a little bruise where it landed, but it's otherwise perfect. And again, if they just fell off the tree, they're like the sweetest, ripest one. Take this one around. Clean and slice our apples. Um, they're all organic, no pesticides around here, you know, so it's not like we need to worry too much about it. We're just getting them a little more presentable. Um, also, since they are organic, there might be the occasional wormhole, so we have to slice that out because there's a few things most guests like less than a worm in their pocket. <laughs> Even if it proves how organic it truly is, I mean, if the worms are there, they're loving it. Because it's 100% organic. Hand picked off the tree, still quivering. You're playing right here, you're going to have surgery, you know. And I told him, Jim, look, I came to have a good time and party. So, we're most of the way through getting our apples sliced. It's not a, too early to preheat the oven because we'll be moving right along. Um, I actually am going to preheat it to 425, which is kind of the high end. You want to brown your crust a little bit at first. You usually try to do that maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes. And then you'll turn it down to more like 350, maybe even 325. Four, 425 is the high end of it for browning, but if you're watching it, you can do it carefully. And you know, five to 10 minutes of that, then you turn it down. All right, 
more apples to prepare, then we'll be whipping together our crust, which is probably the only really fun, challenging part of the thing. Um, back to whacking. This used to be your knife, if you recall. That is my knife. <laughs> oh, it still is, indeed. Yeah, it is. It's just living here for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got our two pies and then some of beautifully chopped, still quivering fresh apples off the tree only, what, a half hour ago. Um, we're now going to sprinkle them with just a little bit of sugar, especially these little ones. They're, they're smaller and more tart, a little harder. Um, we'll put a little lemon juice, if we have it, otherwise I'll probably use lime, just to help keep them from getting totally brown as well as add a little complexity in the flavor. Um, and then we'll be sprinkling that, gee, I'd say about three quarters of a cup of sugar over each one. Um, and we gently fold that all around to try to spread the flavors. Okay. We're going to carefully measure <laughs> This is precise. This uh, is close to, you know, a little shy of three quarters of a cup. Putting that up there, that saves room for later. I'm going to put a little more on this guy. It's a bigger bowl. All right. Let's see if we have lemons. Otherwise, we've got to go pick limes off the tree. But there might be some. Let's see. Let me get this one just because he looks pretty appropriate. With the limes, we're just going to add some juice to each pie for flavor. So there's yours. Uh, we don't need any se Oh, these are seedless, so just squeeze away. Try to get any juice out you can. There's not much here. Dang. These are not really <laughs> juicy limes. So I'm you know not what? getting any juice, are you? No, but I am getting some interesting reactions from the thing. It's a monster. We're going ah. to have to scoop some of that out with a... Uh, with a spoon. This is a trip, watch. So now I can just scoop that out and put that in instead. Yeah. Smells great, doesn't it? It smells really good. Once it's blended into the pie, you'll, mm. you'll never know it's there. I mean, you don't want to be at all aware that there's some lime fluff in here. And you won't. We're gently folding. And, you know, what does that mean? You're just spreading the stuff around while trying not to overly bruise it. And again, I didn't put all of my sugar in yet because I knew I'd want to touch it off with some more after I do this. So that's what we'll be doing there. The aromatic is way different. The smell of this, this pot is just a lot different. So two things are coming up. Um, it's partially because it's early in the season that the apples are a little dry, not much but a teeny little bit, so I'm going to add a little wine. And then I, I still need to sprinkle the last quarter of the, of the sugar on there, so the combination of those two things is going to create a beautiful ambrosia, like syrup of apples, dare I say, fresh quivering apples, wine and sugar. Today we're using a Joseph Fischer Gruner Wettliner Federspiel Rosach. I have no idea if I said any of that right, but that's what the label kind of looks like. So, put a little bit of this in here, a little bit of this in here. And again, um, this is just for flavor to help create a little more syrup in the apples. It's going to evaporate. It's not going to be present in there. It's not really going to affect much in the pie at all. It will leave the most subtle grape sweetness. Okay, so we're carefully measuring our last little bit of flour. I mean, what am I saying? Um, sugar. Speaking of which, you know, if it was really juicy fruit, like stone fruit or berries or things like that, this is the time you'd be adding some flour right up top. Um, 
because in that case the the fruit is so juicy naturally that it needs to be slightly solidified by the addition of some flour but we won't have that problem here because these are somewhat fresh early season drier apples all right just a little bit more of folding i'm gonna let you fold this while i start to get the crust aspects going okay okay If you're making an American apple pie, I would maintain it has to have cinnamon in it. Now, cinnamon's a pretty strong flavor, so it's going to completely alter the natural flavor of the apple. If you were trying to make something more subtly refined, you might do it without cinnamon. But we're going for American apple pie today, so it has to have cinnamon. Now, occasionally, I'll go nuts with an apple pie and I'll turn it into almost a holiday spice pie. So I'll add cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and clove. At that point, you really do lose a certain amount of the apple flavor. <laughs> so it's a judgment call. So we're about to get down on the crust. Basically, I love joy of cooking, man. I, I know the recipe by heart, and you know, that's what I grew up with. My mommy gave me a copy. I could show it to you. It says, for little Hadley. Anyway, um, I think I'm on my third copy now. That's how much I've used this book. We're going to do the Hadley topping, which is pretty much closer to the lattice amount of crust. So we're talking about two and a half cups of flour per pie. I might... I'm hoping to make big pie, so I'm going to go closer to maybe two and three quarters cups. Then, in terms of our shortening, we're going to be using a combination of butter and coconut oil. And um, mm, I might actually double check my recipe because of a substitution like this, but we're talking about two sticks worth of butter. I leave one out to be soft to work. This is a half a cup. It's almost a cup of oil per two and a half cups of flour. Uh, and then after that, just salt. I got some special sea salt from Sicily. <laughs> because we're hoping to go to Sicily soon. And I'm like, wow, cool. Uh, so we'll be used to the salt by the time we get there. You can see how carefully I measured things. <laughs> So in here, we're going to do, uh, as you know, Star, from talking to me, I'm pretty leery about using whole wheat flour for certain pastry things because of the higher gluten content. It's, you know, it's better for you because it's got higher protein content. Wow, is this not a sifter? I was thinking it was a sifter. I guess it is. It's just a two-day sifter. Um, Okay, we can pour this into a better sifter. So, I'm going to use um, about two-thirds whole wheat flour, which is frankly more than my experience and intuition tell me. I haven't used this Bob's Red Mill before. It's a pastry flour. Maybe it'll be better. As I was saying, due to the high gluten content in whole wheat flour, I'm going to use, in this case, experiment with something I haven't actually used before. Coconut flour. I'm gonna add uh, about a third of the coconut flour. And the thing I don't really know is, you know, how does it, how does it bake? How does it taste? How does it interact with the other flour? For what it's worth, the label there says to use, only substitute 20%, I'm substituting more like a third. So, Ooh, it's an um, experiment. I like a good experiment. All right, we're just going to toss whatever rocks happen to be in there. <laughs> you know, a lot of these sifting traditions, they're ancient. They go back 100 years ago when stuff was literally milled on grindstones down the block. And, you know, there was gravel in your flour. You had to sift it <laughs> if you didn't want gravel in your bread, you know. Nowadays, you can rely pretty well on the local places to have 
ground it up better. Um, we're just going to blend that a little bit. We're going to add some salt. Turns out my totally bitchin' sea salt from Sicily is coarse. So I can't really use it because uh, it's not going to break up enough in the crust. I'm going to use a little, ooh, more than a little. <laughs> I'm going to use like a teaspoon of it. So it could be that there will be some salty moments in the pie crust for various people. Uh, I'm going to instead switch to this one here, which is nearby, Portuguese. I mean, hey, um, Eden Sea Salt, which isn't open yet. Um, we tripled a recipe that calls for one teaspoon. So basically we're gonna, that's about a teaspoon. It's a large teaspoon. Oop. <laughs> nah, it's about another teaspoon. We're gonna light because I added the coarse stuff. Um, I like stuff salty, I gotta admit. It's not that healthy, I guess, so. I shouldn't advocate it for others, but pie crust for me, especially when it's a sweet pie, I like to have a little saltiness in the crust. It's kind of contrasts it with the pie. And somehow, I don't know, it excites my taste buds in a way that I want to eat more pie because I have the saltiness in the crust. So hey, what's wrong with that? We're looking for something in the range of three cups of shortening. I'm gonna add some soft butter. And why did I soften some of it? Well, you want to have your butter and shortening in various consistencies for a good crust in my experience. So this one's soft. It's gonna mash up really quick and easily. We might use that later. I'm also gonna add a cold stick of butter because this is almost my barometer. Um, we're gonna be carefully cutting this one into little chunks about the size of peas. And of course that one's so soft it won't cut. This one is hard, it'll cut. Um, on the other hand, I don't really need that much cut in the size of peas. The um, coconut is also gonna end up cut in the size of peas. So what have we added so far? This is a half a cup, right? So we've added one cup so far we need to add about two more cups. It's a little more than one cup. I'm carefully measuring as you can see. So I'm gonna make this cup a lighter one. That looks about it for me. Now keep in mind you can actually readjust some of this when you get there later and, you, and you're like, oh, it doesn't have enough of this, enough of that. You can kind of add more of this and that at the end and that'll be okay. So now comes the, the curious part. We're gonna get a knife and we're gonna just start whacking all of this stuff up into little pieces. Ultimately, it'll be this cold butter that'll be the hard one to cut, right? So I'm going to start there and cut it up. And we want it to be about the size of peas or, you know, a small bean. All of this other stuff cuts a lot easier. You can just kind of whack through it. So what's happening? Well, we're reducing our shortening and blending it in part of the way. We're not blending it all the way in. You homogenize it and you'll have some oily piece of stuff that won't be very good, but you keep your shortening in the size of little pea chunks, or approximately, and you fold those into your crust, and they're still there, and they bake into the crust, and then you end up with these little pockets of shortening that flake and bubble and form little air pockets as they bake and it makes for a lighter, fluffier crust. So that's the scene there. I'm getting pretty close because I'm trying to make rustic, folksy, hippie apple pie. 
And I don't like anything too homogenized and too fancy and too overdone and too whatever. Uh, too much of anything. I want it to be mellow, easy. And it'll actually, for me, it'll be taste better that way and it'll be more of an unrefined, natural thing. So even though I washed my hands before we started all this, I'm going to wash them again just because, you know, it's all about the hands right now. So. For me, the next step is actually the most crucial one. We're now blending in ice water. I've tried using a million other things and a lot of them work. Nothing works better <laughs> than ice water. Why is it iced? Well, we're actually trying to congeal our shortening that's in there. We don't want that shortening to melt and blend in because all of our work to get the little peas would be wasted. We're trying to preserve those peas. So by adding cold water, it keeps the shortening congealed. And those little pockets that we're shooting for will, will happen as a result. If I used hot water, it would all melt and it would be that, basically a bummer. It would be totally a bummer. Um, I don't happen to have ice water ready, so it takes about 30 seconds to put ice cubes in water, and then I have some. So we're adding cinnamon. Um, this thing's kind of interesting. Emphasis on kind of. It grinds the cinnamon for you. I mean, that's pretty cool. You're getting like fresh ground cinnamon. The bummer is, I need two teaspoons. So it's going to be a little oh more God. than I want to do. Um, maybe because it's fresh, I can get, you know, it's a teaspoon per pie, not even. So we're going to go easy on the spices and keep it simple. We're just going to go with cinnamon. Maybe we'll throw some grated nutmeg on top. Because um, it's, not everybody knows, it's one of the known ancient aphrodisiacs. So a little of that on top is always a good thing. Here's the deal. The recipe's joy of cooking, my beloved one, it understates by far the amount of water that you're going to need to add to the crust. Maybe the point they're trying to make is that less water is, is good, but I find I have to add a lot more water than they suggest. They might say like four tablespoons per, not even, per crust. I'm going to be adding closer to a cup, so it's not that comparable. It's like way more. I'm just going to add, I don't recommend the ice cubes because they take too long to melt. So what is that? I'd say I just added my first cup. Won't be nearly enough. And I am, again, gently folding it in. I basically poured the water on top and now I kind of push stuff around. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to not mush anything together. You don't want it mushed together. I'd say that's close to the second cup. This, you know, under ideal circumstances, this could get us to the right consistency, but I don't think it is. We're trying to get a sense of how well it's binding without actually pressing it together in any way. We want it to kind of bind on its own. So a little more sprinkle of cold water. Just smells so good. <laughs> I would say I've easily added two cups of ice cold water to this at this point in time. It's a little bit of an experiment here, right? Because we're using this flour we've never even seen before. Have you seen coconut flour before? Okay, well. Maybe I've seen it and never thought much about it. Now I'm thinking hard about it because, you know, we don't know what its binding uh, capabilities are. For me right now, this is almost ready to press into a ball. Almost. That's the last step. You need to get it ready to where it can press into a ball. But it's not there yet. So I need a whole bunch more water here before it'll do that. So I'm going to get more ice water. I would say we're going to be in the range of two and a half, three cups of ice water that I'm adding. Okay, I'm gonna wing it at this point. Whoops. There's still a lot of little crumblies, which is disconcerting because those have to all get bound in. But we're now gonna start pressing it together and see how well 
they want to bind in. So, whereas I said previously, we don't want to press it together at all, that was because we didn't want to mix it. Now, we're going to bind, press it all together one ultimate time at the end, but as you can see, there's balls of stuff floating around in there. I didn't mix it all together. Okay, this is good because it's crumbly enough to where I think it's going to be light and fluffy, but it's wet enough that I'll be able to roll it. There's our flour. This is wax paper, parchment paper, anything that's a paper kind of works. You can even use a paper bag if you use enough flour. Um, you'll see in a minute why this is crucial. You want a piece of paper down here because you've got to transfer your pie crust into your pie pan. And with the paper, it's super easy. I'll show you that in a minute. Normally, you'd want your crust congealing, i.e. sticking together a little better. Uh, I mean, congealed, does that su suggest it's all about the fats? I don't know. Because here, the water and the glucose are really what's determining it. So that's enough for a large pie crust there. I'm going to add a little more flour on top. You know, all this prep we did before, and then we just throw flour in. Well, this is a minimal amount of flour. And plus, it makes these little layers that I talked about before that are good. So I just press it with my hand at first to try to get it into a big circle. Um, you know, you want to kind of pay attention to the edges because otherwise it gets all flaky and spaced out there. So pulling the edges in a little. I'm about to hit it with a rolling pin. One of the nice things, actually, about the wax paper is you can just spin your project like that. Now, here's the deal. Other people, they might be all freaking out, like, oh, it's not a circle, it's not even, it's not whatever. I'm, like, happy about all that. I don't like shit even. And you're going to see the way I do the crust in a minute. You want all these weird shapes and stuff. That's part of the Hadley concept. Let's get a bite. And see if it fits. So it does. Okay. So now we'll look at the Easy Hadley transfer system, which is really under stress right now because this is a funky, dry crust, not at all ideal, hard to work with, you know, breaking up in pieces. Part of it's going to break. But even with all that, watch. Voila! So, here's the deal. Don't mess with these big flappy weird things. You want all of them, you'll see in a minute. Now's the big moment. We're gonna actually make the pie, so. Whoops. All right, so we're larding it all in there. It's basically how much of this can we reasonably fit in. It's gonna bake down. I'm gonna add some of the extra juice that we went to some trouble to make. Give it a chance of a little more moisture as it bakes. So, here's the fun thing. What do we do with this extra crust? <laughs> you listen to the drummer, you listen to the bass player, you get the vibe. And then you flip that one over there. And then you come up and you, whoa, good lick that way. We'll get that one later. And then, whoa, we can do that over there. And then we're going to just curl this a little bit on this side. Oh. So then maybe we'll flip this one way in here. We got some extra, we let him float out in the middle, man. Just, ooh, a little bit more up in there even. We'll let that over the side just for contrast. And these little extra pieces are perfect in there. There's one pie, you wanna open the, the stove? So that baby's going up there, voila! That's a tight fit, this one fat ass. Oh man, don't be mushing with my thing. And it's gonna expand a little too. That's called a close one. Okay, so one challenge is we gotta come in there in like 10 minutes and put the top on the bottom because we have it so hot. It, it's really 10 minutes is all I can do. 
before it starts running too much. You want a little golden brown, not a brown brush. We're gonna check the pies. It's been about 10 minutes and we'll see if it's time to flip. I don't know, they're still looking. How's it looking? Long time to go. We want golden brown. As soon as they're golden brown up there. And then how long do we bake it for? Um, another 45 minutes. So pies this big, they're, they're just almost twice the size of a small pie. By the way, make sure you get the thing you're making. Um, trip stars. What is it? Hippie tort. This is the leftovers. Should we add more apple? Yeah, let's add a little more and we'll add all this juice, of course. So we had our perfect joint, which I'm gonna go have more of in a moment, before the pie, but after the pie, nice local, one of my favorite beers these days, super cluster. Everything Lagunitas makes is great. It is great, I love you guys. Little brew to celebrate an ancient tradition, and dare I point out, American apple pie came from Germany. <laughs> it really did, the recipe's pretty much the same. You'll find a lot of varieties all over the world. It's the next day, and I'm about to take a look at the pies. I had to leave before they came out of the oven, and they were actually made because we're having like a dinner party here tonight, but let us take a look. <laughs> at the finished, wow. Here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Allow me. Okay. Aha, part of it is in the sun. Ooh, it smells. It's that coconut flour, heavenly. And then, I hate ooh. to say it, but. Oh, there's a piece out of it. There were some mice. Who did that? Did you try it? I did, I had to. Uh, How was it? Well, for me personally, the ratio of coconut oil to butter did, wasn't, wasn't perfect for me. I would have used more butter and less coconut oil. Um, it didn't end up quite as soft and flaky as I would have liked, and I'm thinking somehow that's the factor. But, you know, I try to do it different every time I do it. Uh, you know, it's kind of like playing a jazz tune. Why do it the same way as the last time? I mean, you did that already, right? So do it different. Look at it. That's what it looks like. This is the one with the bigger apples. Let's try the other one and then I'll give you my verdict. That was the one with the bigger apples. That was the one that I thought would probably taste better. This one's kind of falling apart a little bit. Sorry, I'm just going in here eating it with my hands. <laughs> I could have used a fork, but I did not. Mmm. Kind of turned out like I thought. This one has definitely like more tartness to it from the apples. And this one is definitely a lot more sweet. I'm into them. I like these pies. I think they're freaking delicious. I like a good, thick, chunky crust. <laughs> they're not too sweet, perfect amount of sweetness. A lot of love went into these and they're just spectacular. So I feel like taking into consideration everything that Hadley said, you know, um, the crust might be a little bit more dry as well because I feel like coconut flour is an interesting thing to work with and you kind of have to like learn how to use it and like how much water it needs and stuff like that. Um, but I like dry food, honestly. <laughs> These are working for me. I'm into them. They're really good, nice homemade apple pies. So I'm at this 
great bar last night and they're selling shirts that look like cow shirts and they say 86 they're all the number 86 and then it says go beers you're gonna get 86 <laughs> i wanted to get one i thought they were great shirts but of course they're sold out what am i doing again oh. wow <laughs> This pie's amazing. No, I'm, I'm, I'll try a virgin bite. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. It works. <laughs> Goes down easy. <laughs> I'd say it works great, actually. How's Again, the, the crust, I would have preferred more butter, less uh, coconut oil, make it a little fluffier. But touch more salt, too. My teaspoons, they weren't big enough. Then they were huge. <laughs> Maybe I should get out of your hair because I'm conflicting with No, you. you should come in and do a. We're doing the pick up a pie and get in here. Can I have one, too? I don't see why not. <laughs> it kind of goes with the hippie thing. You have to come around. Where? Over this Over way? here. And then like, hold the pies closer. Push the pie out. So, thanks guys. Thanks for watching and tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Cooking with Hadley. Making apple pie. Um, I love you all so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>